All the Gearhead Tour with me, Chase Robbins, our social media marketing genius. We're here in Las Vegas on the Strip. We're driving the 2020 BMW Z4 S Drive 30i. We're gonna get started right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Glad to see you again. If you're a return viewer, if not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget, we know you're not subscribed. We see the statistics out there. Go ahead and hit the button. It's down there, it's red. Hit the little bell, you'll know when we're posting new stuff. We're in Vegas, we're on the strip. The weather is beautiful. It's uh, the day after Halloween. It's this? November 1st. We're in town for SEMA. Which, Except no yeah, SEMA. SEMA got canceled. With SEMA being canceled, we needed something to do. We came out to Vegas we're spending the week here we're driving a bunch of cars around checking them out this is one of them this is the 2020 BMW Z4 S Drive 30i there's two versions two variants of this car S Drive 30i and then the M40i this is the baby sister right you know the M40i is you know it's the one with what 382 horsepower like 390 you know the torque 390 something torque this car it's got a 2 liter turbo engine 255 horsepower. What's the torque on this thing? 274 or something? Uh, something I believe so. That. I mean, it's not going to wake up your neighbors or anything. It's a, you know, it's a... It's it's a sporty car, but it's not a sports car. It, is it a sports car? I, I mean, so. I, is it a sports car? What's a sports car? So the 30i is probably the base boxer of the lineup. That's probably the, the competitor for, for this car. And then the M40, you know, is, is going to be the, the higher end boxer. Know, right, more like that. a Boxer S. Right. I mean, so yeah, it's sporty. You know, it's sporty. It's a roadster. Drop the top, enjoy the weather, kind of maybe have a little fun on an on ramp. But it's not a car you're going to auto cross. It's not a car you're going to, you know, take to a HPDE event or something like that. No. I think the M40i would be the better version if you're going to buy. Now, the difference between that car and this car, other than you know, with that car you're going to get the inline six cylinder, the, the bigger engine, and a lot more perks as far as the. the cars going to handle everything else it's going to also cost you an extra 15 grand i think this car clocks in around just over 50 grand like 50,000 625 is base price and then uh, maybe the m40i is like around 65 that 15 grand is going to get you that you know more than 100 horsepower extra it could use it i mean the car is quick it's fun it's peppy i mean it's not like you're driving your grandma's corsica but it's you know i'm not i'm not thrilled hello what can I help you with? Well, hello. She's friendly. She uh, turn off. That was, I mean, that was rude. Did you just interrupt I don't know who she thinks she is. Listen, last night I drove this thing around and my thought, the first thought after driving it for a while, I was like, you know, I think my wife would really like this. You know, I think this is something that she would enjoy. You know, it's it's to her, she would get in this and say, oh, it's so fast. You know, and not that it doesn't have some pep, it does. I mean, you, you get, you know. As the Mustang, as Ford marketed the Mustang, it's a secretary's car. Right, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like that, right? Yeah. Originally, they Originally. marketed that way, yeah. 1964. luxurious or anything it's nice I mean the finishes are okay you know I like the sort of like whatever that is suede or alcantara like the, yeah, alcantara yeah paneling in the doors it's it's nice I like it's nice touch the blue stitching right the blue stitching is a nice oh. touch it, it seems like the controls are pretty well placed you know it's comfortable the seats you know I'm a bigger guy like, I don't feel uncomfortable in this I think I could take this car on a drive it's comfortable it's, yeah you can drive it a couple months back we had the Alfa Romeo 4C that we we drove just a blast to drive. I mean, it's basically a, a go-kart. Yeah. It's not a car that would be comfortable to hop in and drive four hours. No, I mean, uh, this one you could. Then these these are sporty seats. They're well bolstered, but they're padded. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. That is, that is the Alfa Romeo 4C. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, there's a link right up here. Take a look at it. That is a cool car. One of my favorite cars I've ever driven. This car 
is uh, really fun to drive. I mean, it's you know, it's it's not my favorite car I've ever driven or anything like that. But I certainly, I don't know that I would purchase a, a car like this for myself. Like I said, my wife would probably love it. But but it's 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 definitely cool. The outside of it. I like the look of it. I, I did not care for the Z3. I was no. never a fan of the no. Z3. It's definitely not uh, exotic or, or over the top in any way, but it is a very uh, handsome car. Yeah, it's got like those little side vents uh, across the front, behind the front wheel. I like the front fascia. It's got sort of the scoops up there. Yeah, you're not and you're not going to get the woes from people as you drive no. by or anything, but you know people are going to look at you and go, oh, that's a good looking car. You probably get some compliments from your, oh, the yeah. neighbors yeah. at the, your HOA association when you go. For the meetings but but you're not gonna wow people going down the strip you know in vegas um, the nice... color of this car is cool masano blue i think it's called it's a really the color pops that's for sure this is a good looking car and know? the yellow calipers work really well with the blue it looks great i'm high yellow is not a color i would straight go to a lot of times but it works really well with this blue uh, it's got a few different modes you can select from comfort mode you know the comfort pretty mode well comfort. behaved uh, you go into sport mode it's a little more firm and a little the steering's a little more twitchy but yeah you definitely notice too like the shift points are different when oh, you're in yeah. sport mode or eco mode when it but, feels like somebody threw a boat anchor out the back <laughs> let me tell you listen if you every time someone pushes this eco mode button a kitten gets strangled and it, that's sad to me i would never just never touch just that. disable it just, like just tear that out comfort mode is sort of i guess that's the normal mode i guess for, i don't know i probably always drive in sport mode as soon as you're in sport mode of course that different tone to the engine the exhaust shift points, opens up shift points all right it's yeah. it's so much it's so much more that increases its fun level uh by a big factor absolutely uh in comfort mode i'm just driving around I'm like well you know I mean, it's cruise car. mode. It's cruise mode. It's not for me. The sport mode is, is probably where I'd stick. You know, all these cars these days, I mean, like the, even the, so the new Corvette, this BMW, a lot of cars, they have these big dials, these mode dials. I don't know. I, I don't know if I like this. I, I don't know if I can get used to these big dials. I mean, I feel like I'm playing with a, you know, Commodore 64 in 1987, like video game. I just don't, I don't know if I can get into it. But I do like the touch screen and this one's very responsive. Uh, like the nav and the radio and all that, the touchscreen works great. The all the, the climate controls, very easily laid out, pretty simple. The steering wheel, very obviously the same steering wheel from the Supra. Not sure about these logos. Is that a factory logo or has that been put on? I here? think these are aftermarket badges. Yeah, these badges with the yellow in them. I mean, it, it actually works on this car. It matches uh, the calipers. Right, matches the calipers. I mean, I don't, it, I don't hate it. But I think I'd probably just rather see the regular blue BMW logo. Yep. The car does have the M Sport package. But it has the optional 19-inch wheels. The wheels are nice looking. I like the rims. They're not my favorite. Generally, every factory wheel I've ever seen is like the first thing I want to change on a car. Oh, yeah. Love the blue color. Masano blue. It's a good sports car color without being, you know, it's not lime green. Which would, to me, be over the top for a Right. BMW. This this color, it gets some attention, but it's not over the top. Right? It's not an Aventador. Right. Yeah, and that makes sense because I saw a, uh, you know, a Dodge Dart, you know, in lime green, and I just thought to myself, well, that doesn't seem right. It's an angry Kia. That was a very angry Kia. I do like the size of the display. I like the actual, like sort of the overall aesthetic of this display. I don't care for the fact that the tachometer is, I don't know, what yeah. I would call backwards. I completely agree. That's the only weird thing. Other than that, I really like the, the gauge cluster and kind of the layout on the screen there. I like the layout overall. Um, it's definitely a driver-oriented cockpit, but it's not excessively so. A lot of cars these days, it's, it's getting to be where you're, you feel like you're divided. Like the right. passenger and driver are almost cut off because everything is so driver oriented. Right. The infotainment center is tilted a little bit towards me, but you can still operate it. Right, right. Yeah, and not like say the Corvette where it's like yeah, you're, yeah. you're like it's like you're not you're in another room. Right. It's like yeah. go go yeah. go over there. And, and and you're not overwhelmed with buttons. Like you you've got your you've got your screen up here, it's got all your controls, you've got some uh, your HVAC controls, you've got some basic stereo controls, and you've got your controls down here for gears and your sport motor. But there's not, you don't feel like you're sitting in the cockpit of a 747, where they're, you know, which a lot of cars are getting that way. Right. Um, I, I, I personally, I come from the Colin Chapman school of simplifying, you know, add lightness. But a lot of cars now are, are going in the opposite direction. 
Speaking of lightness, I don't know how much this car weighs, but it certainly feels pretty nimble. It's in the mid 3,000 pounds, range around 3,400 pounds. I don't recall the exact number. It That's is. heavier than I would have expected because it doesn't feel like that. The steering, I guess part of it is this, so the steering in this car is very like responsive. Yeah. I don't know, you call it twitchy. Maybe I, I do feel that in the sport mode, maybe it is a little more like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's certainly very like responsive. It's, yes, responsive. Yeah. 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 But, and even though it's, it's only 255 horsepower, it still has a little bit of pep. A little pop from the exhaust. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'll get, you can get some, uh... I could probably get a ticket on this street. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can get some rotation out of the rear of the car uh, with, with a healthy, healthy dose of throttle. So Toyota and BMW joined forces to co-develop this platform that underpins this vehicle as well as the Toyota Supra and it's the second time that Toyota has done that in, in recent history to team up with another manufacturer to develop a vehicle and I think they did it properly this time. What as was the last project? So the first time was a few years back when they developed the Subaru BRZ and the Toyota, well the Scion FRS, right, now it's the Toyota GT86. This time I think they did it right. Uh, today we're driving this car. Tonight we're picking up the 2020 Toyota Supra GR. Uh, so we're gonna have a, a, at least a comparison of the chassis, you know, uh, the, the vehicles, and then the less powerful version from BMW, and then the higher power version. Right. Uh, we need to get Toyota. an M40i, take one out, see what you know. If that'd be a more fair comparison to the hello. to the Supra. Well, hello again. Could you not? Can you see where did she come from? Once again, I know this is only 255 horsepower, but I gotta give it a shot. I think it'll put a smile on your face. I mean, I'm not gonna win a race. Unless, you know, the guy next to me is in a Kia. Now let me ask you, you owned a Porsche Boxster. Yep. Would, is this a car that you would buy? Uh, no. No, yeah, this, this is, this is not, it's not my cup of tea. Right, mine either. It's not, I mean, that's not to, to disparage the car. Not right? at all, no. It's, it's just not it's my thing. It's a cool car. And that, that goes back to, um, I think it goes back to the point, it just doesn't feel like a sports car. Uh, my Boxster felt more like a sports car. Maybe it's because it was the mid-rear layout. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like this is more of a uh, top-down, let's go cruise the beach Yeah, this, type I thought, thing, this but, I, That's the perfect way to describe this car. Like, I, this is, I want to have this in Southern California or South Florida. My Boxster felt like it was begging to be driven hard. Right. This, I, I mean, uh, I don't feel like this car is, is bored and wants to be hammered on. Right. No, I don't. I don't. I don't pick up on that either. I could daily drive this. Absolutely. This for me. This. I, I, I would put that there. I, I would have this car to be a daily driver for me, but it's not something I would take it to, to go out and have fun in the way I like to have fun. This video is not sponsored by GoPro, but I would allow it. Welcome to the Bellagio. Bellagio, beautiful hotel. It's a little, it's not my vibe. It's not my scene. It's a little bougie. It, oh, it feels a little, uh, I don't know, it feels a little uh, old. You know? Like I feel like this is a place where my mom is. She's been dead for several months. I got the door. Yeah, whoever's out there listening to this OEM, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, you need to call him up. You need to, uh, contract that guy to do your, uh, your navigation voice. Uh, I'll pay $500 for that option. I would easily, I would easily match that with you. Did I say turn left? Or Christopher Walken. I'll take a walk. You missed your left. That's good, that's bad. You do it again, I'll stab you. <laughs> a soldering guy. Nobody your likes father, him. He hid this key fob in his ass. The constant smell of marijuana in Las Vegas now. The constant smell. I'm, I may be hot. 